morning and welcome to worship here at Lamington Presbyterian Church. We are delighted many of you could come in person and we extend a warm welcome to those of you online with us this morning. Several announcements I want to highlight. Um, first, we want to remind you that our prayer team meets weekly at 4 o'clock. And if you have any prayer requests, please, those of you who are here, fill them out on the green cards. And you can place them in the offering plate in the back or on our prayer wall. And if you're online, you're welcome to email us any prayer requests that you would like us to lift up as a group. I want to extend Christian sympathy to the family of Adam Fisher upon the death of his father, Adam, last week. So we definitely want to keep the Fisher family in our prayers as they grieve their uh, patriarch. A um, couple of mission opportunities coming up. The first is that in May we will be hosting another week of the um, formerly known as IHN families. Now their nonprofit has become HOME, a different acronym. The second week of May, we will be housing them and feeding them. So if you can help, especially with a meal or um, a financial contribution for their hotel stay, please let Meredith Scott know. Um, we are now um, in getting prepared for basket day, and we welcome any donations. You'll note there's a specific list in the bulletin of um, wonderful pieces that we are asking for, for from you and from friends. So please take a look at that, and if you know anybody downsizing or redecorating, um, keep Lamington in mind as we collect for basket day. And you'll notice that there is um, a wonderful request from Ratika Thomas. She has been working with ePort and helping them to build a new website. This is part of her gold award project. And Lamington has become um, such an important part of her life that she is asking that we help support our ministry, ePort, and help her to raise money for their new website. Um, so if you're willing to help with that, please designate ePort website in your gifts. And we also, speaking of websites, have launched a new website of our own with the church. Our communications team has been working on this for a couple of months. We are excited mostly that this is a dynamic website that can be easily changed and updated with information and pictures and have weekly bulletin and, and lots of things on there. And so um, take a look at our website and let us know if you have any suggestions or if you have any photographs. We'd especially love to collect photographs from members of events at the church that you um, think would look good on our new website. And we are excited to present this kind of new face and um, new information to the community. And lastly, we are always updating our member directory. People move and change emails and phone numbers. So if you have an update to your contact information, please let the office know. And if you would like an updated directory, either emailed to you or printed out, please let us know. That is available, um, but it's always a, a work in progress. So we have the latest information for you if you would like. And that is it for the announcements. At this point, I invite you to stand as you are able, and together, let us call ourselves to worship responsively. When the disciples were certain that Jesus was dead, he stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Let us watch for the risen Christ this day, bursting in with new life and new hope. Easter people... Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed.
The resurrected Christ has come into our midst, inviting us to repentance and forgiveness. Our journeys have taken us far from God, but the hospitality of Jesus Christ welcomes us home. Confident in this great gift and promise, let us confess our sin before God and one another using the prayer of confession. God of peace, we confess that we have foregone your peace in pursuit of the chaos of the world. We have not silenced the voices of others in order to hear you speak, and we have fallen short of your glory in our wandering ways. Forgive us for failing to bless others in the way you have blessed us. Redeem us so that we would live for something greater than ourselves, which is the life we seek in Jesus Christ our Lord. We continue in a time of silent and personal confession. Amen. The welcoming grace of God is sure for each and for all. Our dwelling place in God is secure. Receive the forgiveness of God and be restored to right relationship with God and with one another. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And as forgiven and freed children of God, let us joyfully pass the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Peace. You may be seated. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of your written word. <clears throat> for as we steep ourselves in scripture, we learn more about who you are and who you created us to be. Send your spirit upon us this morning as we seek to hear your word anew and help us to listen clearly to your message for us this day. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1-7. through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, no one whose sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Here ends our first lesson. Thank you. 
Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from Psalm chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Selah. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Selah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I just met one of my neighbors who lives across the street. She was recently walking her dog, so we got to speak for the very first time. My husband and I were out in our front yard laying down mulch. I was standing at the base of my favorite saucer magnolia tree, the blossoms of which are on the cover of the bulletin this morning. She waved and she crossed the street and stood on the sidewalk beaming, Hi, I'm Jane. Welcome to the neighborhood. We met her puppy and chatted a bit, and then she looked up at my tree and smiled. I love it when these trees bloom, she said. And then poetically, it is so short-lived, so when I see the blossoms first pop at the beginning of spring, I honor this tree. She took a contemplative pause, so poignant that it made me look up at the tree too, and we stood there together for a moment, just honoring God's natural creation. I loved that tree before my neighbor mentioned it. I photograph it and take pictures in its prime. I tell my kids not to climb on its delicate and tender branches. But when she shared that she honors the tree, it gave me great pause. We stood there together gazing up at that tree, and it was a powerful act. I considered how our Creator does unveil for us new life constantly. But we have to take time to respond to the standing invitation to honor it. As I read Psalm 4 last week, the elusive Hebrew word selah caught my eye. You can find it just off the margin in your Bibles 71 times throughout 39 of the Psalms. The definition of selah is hard to come by, but there are several theories. It can signify a pause or mark a moment of silence for a group. Perhaps a time in scripture when we listen for God's voice in between the words. Pastor Eugene Peterson writes that Selah is evidence of the Psalms being used in worship as liturgy, the work of the people, for it was intended to be spoken to a gathered group, a community worshiping together, takes a collective break. He says that if its meaning is an enigma, its use is clear, selah, directed to people who were together in prayer, in worship, to do something or other together. Rabbi Ariel Berger told journalist Krista Tippett in an interview that in Hebrew, the space between the letters is just as important, if not more so, than the writings themselves. Large margins surround the Torah and other ancient Hebrew texts in order for the reader to have a conversation with the words, to insert divine inspirations and questions, 
White blank spaces give us room to absorb the black print. We have to sit with the words of God sometimes, saying nothing, just making space for them to speak. Selah. It's found in the Psalms that are the more musical ones. So it could just be the interlude when the singer is to stop for a moment while the instrumental music goes on, carrying on the tune without words. Selah. It may also mean to raise one's voice, to exalt or to lift up. So as we literally turn our eyes to the heavens for a break in the text, we honor the Lord our God, who calls us his children. The American philosopher and psychologist William James defined wisdom as the ability to discern what is worthy of one's attention and what is not. He believed that it was wise to focus only on the right things and unwise to live in a scattered and exhausted way trying to pay attention to all the things. We don't take time to honor much these days for we are a scattered and exhausted people. We need more white blank spaces. We either rush from one task to another or we sit and lament the things we used to be able to do when we feel stuck at home, but neither exercise is sufficient. As beloved children of God, we are called to revere the Lord and to honor his creation. We get so caught up in the happenings of the world that we forget we were created to tend to creation and to tend to one another as God's creatures. In worship, we gather to pause from our worldly lives and we turn our attention to God alone. We move from worship to work, work to worship, reminding one another to honor the trees, to value what is worthy of our attention. So with the first sight of spring or a Hebrew word or an exaggerated pause in a conversation, we can stop alongside one another and remember what love the Father has given us. For over a year now, we've been yearning to get back to normal. We don't want to admit that we will never go back. Life can only be lived forwards, as Kierkegaard wrote. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. As the author of 1 John wrote, perhaps this entire pandemic could be interpreted as the world's sila, a huge intermission that didn't just interrupt, but nearly disrupted everything except the changing of the seasons, the blooming of our trees, the movement of God's spirit in our midst, the feelings of love that continue to be expressed in new creative ways. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Selah. In the risen Christ, God revealed to us a pure and righteous creation. No longer do we live and die to ourselves, but we live, die, and are raised to new life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Together we can pause, exalt our creator God, and pay attention to what is righteous and pure. In her poem, The Summer Day, Mary Oliver describes the detailed actions of a grasshopper. Then she writes, I don't exactly know what prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down into the grass, how to be idle and blessed. 
how to stroll through fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I honor that tree, my neighbor said. Sila. How wise it is to focus only on what is worthy of our attention. The psalmist tells us there are many who would say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O oh Lord. Trusting that we are God's children, let us live in a way that helps others to pause and to feel the light of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able, and together let us affirm the faith of the Christian Church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Will you join me in prayer? Holy and merciful God, we praise you for claiming us as your own and sending us your Son to show the depths of your love for us. We trust that you hear our prayers and listen when we call to you. Hear us now as we seek to be strengthened in our relationship with you and lift up one another. Liberating God in our post-Easter journeys, we are reminded that you saw, knew, and experienced suffering. And we hear your continuous call to justice for those who suffer. We lament that we are surrounded by senseless acts of violence and tragic deaths that should be avoided. We don't want to become complacent when we hear about another shooting in our country, from Georgia to Colorado to South Carolina to Indiana. For in a month, we layer grief upon grief as human beings incessantly devalue the lives of others. We don't want to be numb to the rising numbers of COVID-19 cases to the startling reality that our world lost three million people in a year to this disease. Nor do we want to be too comfortable with vaccination statuses and vulnerable people in our midst all the time. Open our eyes to the grieving and the hurting people among us and show us how our actions can affect other people. Instill in us mercy, grace, and willing discomfort so that others would know they too have been claimed as your beloved children. God of the resurrection, in our post-Easter journeys, we have encountered Christ when we have extended and received hospitality. Send your spirit to be with us that we could continue to do your work 
and empower us to become your beloved community. In the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has given us the gift of our lives and resources for our living. Most important of all, God's grace sustains us in life, in death, and everywhere in between. Let us celebrate God's life-giving presence in our lives by bringing our gifts in joyful response to the many gifts that we have been given. Our giving does look differently in pandemic, whether you are giving online or mailing a check or putting something in the offering plate in the back. This is also a time for you to offer yourselves as we meditate on the doxology. join me in prayer. Holy God, giver of all good gifts, these gifts are a symbol of our lives, dedicated to you and your ministry in our midst. May we all serve as ministers of your peace, love, and justice in our community and our world. And may we help others to know their identity as beloved children in you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, go out into the world and take a pause honoring God's gifts in your life so that others might see how they too are beloved children of God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you and those whom you love wherever they are this day and always. Amen.
Thank you.